How are you? My name is uh, Michael Zelenitz. I work at New York Presbyterian, although this is not a health care talk per se. We just happen to do a lot of health care at the hospital. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to present today is a problem that I have personally had. I'm sure many of you have kind of run into the same problem if you've been playing with graph databases. Um, and I don't know that I have the perfect answer, but I'd like to spark a conversation. And luckily, we're close to lunch, so maybe we'll continue at lunch. <laughs> but I recently read a book um, by Carlo Rovelli, who's a physicist. And he frames this, this problem really well, right? In that things are only interesting insofar as they, are, they happen at both a place and at a time. So he gives the example of a rock. While we think of something that is, a rock is something that lasts a long time, right? In the scope of the universe, right? It's a collection of atoms that happens to exist for yeah, a couple billion years, right? And then it's gone and it's no more. So we're interested in, in the data world in capturing events that are both at a given time and in a given place. So you know, we have this problem where spatial data and, and time data, they don't always work well together, right? So for example, you know, you have these maps, right? And this is a bunch of events that happen over maybe months, maybe years, maybe seconds, who knows, right? Um, here's a, a time series, right? But this could be many events, or we don't have a good way of sort of taking what happened over time versus what happened at a given place, right? And we end up like in, in graph data land with a lot of these really flat kind of hairball uh, but we, we want to be able to understand, like let's say that these are procedures, right? We want to understand where these procedures happened, what procedures happened, and when they happened over time. So that was the problem that we tried to solve. So I work in New York Presbyterian. For those of you who are um, from the area, it's a really big hospital. For those of you who are not from the area, it's, it's a really big hospital. <laughs> so uh, the impetus for this, this project was, I sort of, we did, I, last year's Graph Connect, uh, I spoke about a project that we uh, started. We wanted to graph everything that happens in a hospital as sort of a social network. Um, we wanted to look at visits and patients and what happened to those patients. And the problem that we kept running into was we wanted to know what happened to patients, not only during their visit, but where they were at the time that a certain event happened uh, and capture both what happened to a patient and when and where that event happened, right? <laughs> So here's my proposed model. All right, so first you take a time tree. So uh, there's a really great blog post that I shamelessly stole the code from um, by Mark Needham, I believe. Um, just Google it and drop it and paste. <laughs> um, where you essentially create this time tree where you have you know, years to months to days to hours, minutes, seconds, however far down you want to go. Um, and you create this time tree, right? And then you create um, events with pointers to you know where this event happened, right? So that's one model for capturing uh, time series mod, uh, data, right? Oops, if I go back. Okay, uh, now you can take a similar tree if you think about sort of one tree on one side and another tree on the other side, where now we have uh, locations, right? So this could be a building, a unit, a floor. Right, which breaks down to, let's say, rooms. And we could say this event, this instance of this type of event, happened in the room. So let's just translate this into something that we can understand. So let's say, um, I don't know, I was in the hospital. I had a colonoscopy. OK, so my instance of colonoscopy happened in OR9 or something. Right? And then let's say later I had another colonoscopy and I had that one at room 11. Or another colonoscopy happened and happened in room 11. Right, um, So we can understand sort of, now we can put these two together. So this is a little hard to understand, but there we go. <laughs> so here we take the time tree on one side, the location tree on the other side, and here's sort of the secret sauce is we connect them with these uh, sort of false entities, these time, place, space entities, right? So you have each of these is a given visit and happened at a certain place and at a certain time. And we have pointers connected to each uh, time period where it happened. So let's say this person is staying in room, um, you know, room nine, right? So this person stayed in room nine 
from 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, sometime during 10 o'clock, they were transferred to room 11, right? And now they're staying on room 11 during these hours. And then we can model, using this construct, this event or this series of events right, happened while the person was staying at this location or while the person was staying at this location. Um, so, you know, here's a, a real life ish example. <laughs> um, so, this visit, right, this is exactly what I was modeling before. It was on, if you know Cornell, this is the, you know, fourth floor. Then they went to the OR, they came back to the ICU, they went to somewhere else, I can't see, <laughs> and then they went home, right? So, uh, and each of these is a, a separate instance, right? These are fake, but uh, <laughs> at a separate instance. And um, this, Unit maps up to the whole tree. I didn't show the whole tree because you, know, you have to be able to see this, right? Um, and then here's that same sort of event time tree. So you have a visit, which is in a series of locations over a series of time, and now we can map events to these uh, time series nodes. All right. So just a cool example of something. Um, that you can do using some graph analytics, uh, really unrelated. But now that we understand sort of how patient flow works and how, uh, what a patient trajectory looks like, uh, we can apply some, like I use a graphing, uh, sorry, a community detection algorithm to understand just, I fed it the graph, I said, figure out what the communities are. And it did a pretty good job. I mean, these are all oncology units, right? These are all pediatric units. So it understands sort of that patients of similar type end up in these similar units. So uh, some interesting applications. If you have any questions, or better, if you have any uh, experience in this and you have a better idea, I'd love to hear <laughs> uh, how you've solved this problem in your own practice. So thank you. Questions? <laughs> What insights have you pulled from that representation? What insights have we pulled? So it's a, it's a good question. Um, the reason that we started doing this um, was to be able to look at um, how infection spread through the hospital. Um, so understanding, uh, that's why the, getting that time and location was very important to us because we had to understand um, that patient A was in the same room as patient B at the same time that they contracted an infection. And then we can look and see, okay, well, what other, you know, branching out, what unit, what patients may have been nearby who was in a similar, who was being cared for by the same provider, who was sort of co-located on the unit. Um, and then it allowed us to do some more uh, advanced sort of anal uh, analysis to figure out how diseases move around and who may be at risk. Yeah. Say when. Yeah. Why uh, not using the events itself to connect to the, to the location and the time? Why would you add another note? <clears throat> so what we want to be able to do is we want to say, um, we want to be able to, to map up to a larger events node. Um, so we want to be able to say, OK, uh, this event of colonoscopy has, um, and under that sort of larger event, right, there's a larger colonoscopy event. Under that, there may be many instances of colonoscopy where I'd say, I myself had a colonoscopy. Um, and then we want to be able to also map that to say, this event of colonoscopy happened at this location and time. Yeah, so moving a patient is not an event, right? Right, exactly. But you can, you can, correct, it's not moving, in a, it's not an event, but you may want to look at sort of where was the patient at the time of it, yeah. Uh, yes? So I see you use visit ID for um, that node. Do you actually also have a patient um, node for recurring? Uh... For recurring patients? So recurring patients, um, are on, there's a patient node, and you may say this patient has visit one, two, three, and four. So, uh, yeah, we don't, the, a, a visit is not, a patient may have multiple visits, so we wanted to separate out patients and visits. 
Uh, yeah. Have, have you thought about tracking readmissions after procedures to figure out? Uh, it's it's doable. It's not something that we've used this particular use case for, but um, yeah, I mean, sort of the power is once you map down to patients, then we can. And one of the problems that we actually have is that we have sort of multiple patients in multiple systems. Um, sorry, single patients in multiple systems across. They may have. Um, they may see an outpatient provider who's affiliated, and then they have an inpatient visit. Uh, so being able to actually map those visits uh, to a patient in a graph is actually a very powerful way to do that, sort of um, uh, like readmissions and all those. Uh, yeah. So some data uh, products out there have temporal extensions. Mm -hmm. Um, potentially, I mean, it's sort of, be, we wanted to be able to use this graph model and extend this um, to other things. I haven't looked at any, uh, I'm not sure, we could talk afterwards about what sort of uh, specific ideas you had in mind, but, uh, all right. Thank you all very much. <laughs>